So it's 7 p.m. and I am in the mood for some couple of So we're gonna run to Walmart and grab some last minute ingredients. <laughs> They didn't have Galanka. And that's the thing that sucks about living in Anchorage because we don't have access to Asian foods and ingredients. And I can't just like go to the store that I want to because I'm also considering the risk of me driving there. Like, is it worth it in the snow? Look, look at the snow. It's coming down hard. The road conditions are kind of slushy right now, so yeah, you just kind of have to take all that into consideration, you know. So do I cook the second batch again with ginger root? I don't know. So I came all the way for this root. I mean, I'm telling you, it better make a difference. 100% better make a difference. Maybe some more heat to the recipe, I don't know. But it came all the way to Midtown for this little root. This will be my second time making kapun. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just go ahead and sit back, relax, enjoy the process, I guess. Maybe you're cooking as well. Maybe you're doing some chores. Whatever the case, Thank you for listening, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. It was by the end of December, when I was doing some self-reflection, that I'd come to realize that I'm not who I think I am. You know, I've got some serious imposter syndrome going on. So here's a little backstory for those who are just meeting me for the first time. A little over a year ago, I had some sort of manic episode, and I thought I wanted to become a content creator and influencer. I chose my culture to be my niche because that's what I thought I knew best. I started gaining traction and followers on TikTok pretty quickly, and I was able to organically make my videos go viral. This got the attention of some pretty big influencers in the community, and long story short, now I'm an influencer at Sabaiti Fest, the largest Southeast Asian music festival in the United States. Now don't get me wrong, I've always wanted to be a leader or someone my people can look up to. I just didn't see it coming in this form. Maybe through my career in law enforcement or speaking out on mental health. But instead, I'm bridging the gap through comedy. So as I reflect back to a year ago and to where I am now, yes, I have made a lot of progress. But I've learned that I really don't know my culture like I claim to know it. And here I am on stage with the big stars who really do know their culture. So if you're here for the first time, follow along with me on my journey to rediscovering my roots. Today, we're going to do that with Kapun. <laughs> so, first and foremost, I don't know how to cook to save my life. So a lot of the times, I'm just throwing things together to see if it works. And I'm going to be completely honest, I watched a lot of YouTube and TikTok to find the recipe for Kapun. If you guys want to learn how to really cook, go to Mr. International or Harris, or find Chef Sang online on YouTube. I'll leave their link in the bio below. <laughs> so... As you can see here, I'm starting the soup, and I threw in the lemongrass, galanka, and kefir lime. I didn't really know how much kefir lime to put in, so I just put in what I thought was right. And the idea is so that as the water starts to boil, it'll begin to infuse the herbs with the broth. So anyways, growing up, my family wasn't really a kapudan family to begin with. We were more of a pho and kopiak senden family if you know what I'm saying. So whenever we did have kapun, I was salivating at the mouth. Making this dish for my wife and kids makes me really miss the family get-togethers we used to have. And if you haven't already figured it out, I live all the way up in Alaska, and I've been up here since I was about three years old. So about 29 years now. Every one of my family members have made it up here at least once, but eventually moved back to lower 48. The winters are just long and depressing. It's really hard on your mental health. My only blood family members that I have left up here are my two younger cousins. Then when I leave with my family, they'll be all alone. We're just so isolated from everything. Family get-togethers were my best core memory. My cousins would come over early in the day, maybe around three or four, 
and they wouldn't leave until like really late at night, depending on the day. My aunts and uncles would just hang out and listen to Thai and Lao music with my parents, or just gossip around food and drink. Us kids, it was our mission to play outside and only come inside when the food was ready or if we were hungry. But until then, we ran around outside harassing each other, laughing, and making lifelong memories. So here, I'm making the curry sauce that's eventually going to go into the pot. It's pretty simple. If I can do it, you can do it too. Fry up the garlic, galanka, and shallots, then mix in some red curry and coconut milk. I mixed in some yellow curry in this one as well, just because I saw some YouTuber do it, and I wanted to try it out. Don't forget the shrimp paste, and just mix it all in. It took me about 10 minutes or so. Add some more coconut milk. Would you consider this a roux? Is it a roux or is this a sauce? I don't know, it's got me kind of perplexed. Now for the taste test. Yup. Yup, that'll do it. <laughs> this is a voiceover after the fact. I'm being silly, but I do remember it. It was yummy. So this is the part that makes me nervous all the time. Take the chicken out real quick and just put it aside and we'll come right back to it. And this part here where you put the sauce into the bowl, I mean into the pot, and you see that there? It doesn't look right. <laughs> and it's not until you continue to let it brew a little bit longer that the curry will start to separate and that's when you know that it's good. Kind of like right now. Right now it's starting to look good. And earlier I added fish sauce and this is a MSG. Just two pinches of it. MSG is king. So let the haters hate and the potatoes potate. I think this is probably the most tedious part of the process, so not too bad. But basically just start peeling the chicken off the bone. You can see here that it's a little undercooked, but it's okay. It's going to go back into the pot like so. Um, and I'll just keep brewing it until it's fully cooked. My favorite part to bite in is that chicken skin. Mm -mm. Guys, we did it. Look at that nice, rich orange color. And I know for a fact I didn't use every single ingredient or item that I was supposed to. This is just a really quick grab what you can get, a throw it together kind of meal. And don't be like me and forget to put the noodles on the stove. Make sure you soak it prior to even starting so that when you do cook your noodles, you can have it all done at the same time. You know, I wasn't always this domesticated. <laughs> My wife used to literally do everything in the kitchen, and it wasn't until she left for Air Force training and I was left with two kids that I finally realized all the work that she put in day in and day out. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, wow. It's Bluey? Yeah. Yes. I've changed a lot over the years while being with my wife. Really had to learn new perspectives and change as a person. Marriage is a partnership. It contrasts what we saw growing up. While mom stayed at home, dad went to work and made the money. I know I'm a better person today than I was in the past. That's for sure. Look at the broth and the chicken skin and that meat. It's all come together so nicely. Not bad for my second batch of kalpun ever. Got a bowl already made for my son. Grab some of this pre-made cold slaw. I was told it's a cheat code so that I don't have to cut up all the lettuce and everything separately. Look how that just comes in so nicely. And this entire process took me about 40 minutes to make. 40 minutes in total. It probably would have been shorter if I would have cooked the noodles at the same time as I was brewing the kaput. But like I said, not too shabby for my second time. Here you go, my love. You know, I'm pretty proud of myself for just Googling a bunch of recipes and throwing it together like an amateur. Or maybe I should have just paid attention when I was younger. But you know what? Relearning and rediscovering these recipes brings back the nostalgia of being a kid. Which, at the end of the day, will make this bowl of kapun so much better. Can't wait to bite into that chicken and those quail eggs. I am obsessed. That's one recipe down, and I have so much more to explore and learn. And with that, even more stories. So as you're listening, doing chores around the house, maybe you're driving? Have me as background music. 
or maybe I'm putting you to sleep. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to get to know me today. It's really been a pleasure. Please comment below what you'd like to see me cook next. And as always, I love you. Bye-bye.